I know my setup's a little bit different, but if you've been following my vlogs, you know why I'm not home anymore. I will be making a playlist of my journey though, so watch all my motherfucking videos. I am in a hotel room right now. I did make a vlog about it. It will be coming out tomorrow. Okay, it's time. Amber's Closet. This is gonna be my first time reacting to one of her videos. I've only seen maybe one or two of her older, older videos because she is an OG YouTuber, but I don't know what her videos are like now. So I'm gonna go ahead and react because this title sounds interesting. Amber's Closet uploaded a video called Answering your lesbian sex questions. Y'all ready? Let's get it. What is considered lesbian sex? Ooh, What's up, beautiful humans? It's your girl, Amber, and today I'm about to answer all the questions that Damn you it. gave Hold on, girl, my space bar ain't working. First off, I wanna say this. I love that you said humans because everyone falls under that category. That's what's up about what is lesbian sex. I asked everybody on my Insta story and they Shut gave up. me so many questions. And literally I'm looking at this list like, whoo, some of these really blew my mind, y'all. Like, you know Google is a thing, right? <laughs> and you know there's plenty of lesbians on the internet there's, answering these questions, And right? there's so porn. Say that. Before <laughs> I start this video, I just wanna remind y'all about some educational sexual videos that I have, like how to give good head part one, how to give okay. good head part two, okay. and strap etiquette. A lot of sexual videos, but I just wanna put that out there that if I don't answer your question specifically, go look at those resources. Let's get into it. The first question that I as of right now, it seems it seems to me that she's very open with all topics, with all types of conversations. I don't know how old she is, but I love that she is talking about these subjects because people are curious. I need to answer, what is considered lesbian sex? For me, it's anything where two women are doing something that they can orgasm from, period. The next question that I got a lot that people ask all the time because it's like a lesbian stereotypical. Well, see, I'm gonna have to disagree with that one. What is sex in general? When it's more than one person having fun, <laughs> pleasing each other sexually. And I say more than one person because sex can mean orgies, threesomes, foursomes. It can mean as many people as you want it to be. And when I say pleasing each other sexually, I say that because you don't orgasm every time you have sex. You just don't. A lot of people fake the funk. But that is the ultimate goal. You do want to orgasm. You do want your partner to orgasm. That's the fun part about sex, you know? That's when you actually get the pleasure. What is lesbian sex? More than one woman being sexually intimate with each other who is into other women sexually pleasing each other. Because just because two women are having sex does not mean that they're lesbian. They could have had a drunk night. Okay, or they could be bisexual. It's very complicated. She put it in simple terms for people. Then is, do y'all really scissor? Is that a real thing? Mm. Yes, scissoring is a real thing and there's so many different variations of it. Mm -hmm. Now me personally, yes, I scissor, not the way that you think of, like the traditional, like people just think of bop, 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 bop. I mean, <laughs> people do that. That's good for them. But me personally, imagine their legs like open and like I'm in between and I kind of raise up to where both of our clits are hitting each other, you know what I'm saying? And for me, that's kind of like foreplay, we're getting in the mood. Maybe a right, transitional right. mood, meaning if you're doing something and before you do the next thing, this might be a cool thing. Let's say I'm laying down and this area is my clit, right? The other person, the opposite way, on top, both the areas are really hitting each other. I feel like that's a really good position to where you guys can both feel something. And then if you want to, you can slide like a thin little vibrator in there and it also kind of spices up the action and then you can also finger from that position. Ooh, I'm telling y'all a lot. I was yeah, going to right. say, girl, you is open. <laughs> you are telling people how you fuck. Hey, by all means, if that's gonna get women to come at you, let them, <laughs> shit. But yes, that's, that's what scissors is. It's pretty much two vaginas touching each other. Okay, so the next question was, 
how do I eat punani properly? <laughs> if it's my first time, how do I prepare? I'm scared to eat punani. Now listen, refer to those videos that I told you about. Understand that everybody kind of goes through this point. Okay, and what? if you're open and honest and talking to your partner and just letting them know, like I'm trying to figure you out, so let me know if there's anything that you like or dislike. When I dove in on the first time, I was shy, but I was so happy that it was happening that I just dove into it. And I started just doing things that I imagined that I think that I would like. And then right, I just started right. reading her body language and her moans and was like, oh yeah, I think this is working. Let me keep this up. There so you go. One of the weirdest questions that I got asked over and over was- Hold on, I like that. I like the advice that she gave you guys. If you're doing it for the first time, I feel like that's a natural action to do is to try to please them the way you would like to get pleased. Everybody is different. Everybody likes different things. But if you're gonna have sex with them for the first time, that's pretty much how it goes. And then you really want to get to know how their bodies are moving, if they move a little bit. It doesn't necessarily mean that they like it. It could also mean that that made them feel uncomfortable or it hurt. Some women's clits are sensitive. It's best to even talk to them, ask them what if they like this, if they like that. And hopefully your partner is open to let you know. And don't be sensitive, okay? Don't get your feelings hurt if they tell you they don't like that. Remember, you want to please your partner the best way that you can. Because you don't want nobody else pleasing her, right? How long does lesbian sex last? I guess what's crazy to me is that people don't see each other as humans. They just right. think like, oh, within your sexuality, you do this, so it lasts this long. And then because you're, you're straight, it lasts this long. It literally is, it doesn't every matter. human is different. I can literally have sex with a human and she comes in four minutes and the next person, she likes to multi-gasm for an hour. What feels good to you and your partner? One thing that I feel like I need to talk about because I got this question a lot and honestly, it's kind of ignorant and kind of pissed me off. I'm, I'm gonna be real. As a lesbian, it doesn't make sense that you don't like men, but you still use straps or dildos. <laughs> to me, this is such an People ignorant are stupid. statement. It's Very. like you don't understand women and women parts. Just because certain women are not comfortable with men doesn't mean their body parts don't work. And doesn't mean that they don't get pleasure from different ways. Like men and their penis don't drive pleasure, y'all. So <laughs> just because a woman right. likes penetration doesn't mean she's supposed to be straight. I just had to get right. that out of the way. With, when it comes to penetration, you can use anything. It does not need to be a penis. Subject, I have to bring up that so many people ask me strap questions. One of the number one things that people ask me is, can you feel pleasure from strapping? Absolutely. There are different holsters that you can have that kind of sits on top of your clit. So someone giving it could feel good from that pressure or there's straps that vibrate that also feel great? Pretty much the answer is yes. They also ask me if- And sometimes you don't even need those type of straps. Just the fact that, you're, that your pelvis is touching on them while you're grabbing them and, and stuff like that, that can actually make you orgasm. Straps or dildos or toys are an always or a necessary thing. No. No, it's not. It's not always my go-to. I feel like there's so many other things that I can do before I get to that point. That's kind of like a build-up. That's not something I jump into. Yeah. And that's something I would love to give y'all as a tip. Have a conversation first. Like, don't just introduce it and assume <laughs> Imagine. that every woman likes penetration because that's not always true. Facts. And don't always assume that only only fins like penetration because that's not always true. Someone asked me, well, can a stud be a bottom? Y'all, we are women. Yes. Well, one of my most masculine friends that wants uh. to talk about having her femme wife strap her. Uh. Everyone is different. So take those stereotypes out of your mind Ouch. and literally blow them up and throw them away. I Especially a lot of you studs that try too hard to play that masculine role. It's okay to get fucked. Try it at least once. If you tried it, you didn't like it, it's not your thing, that's okay, you don't have to like it. But listen y'all, I'm one of them studs. I'm everything in the bedroom. I ain't lying. And that's not me saying that I'm the shit. I'm saying I'm open to a lot of things. Personally, don't like penetration, but I understand the workings of a woman and how majority of women do. Now, the next question was asking me about G-spots, right? That's also in my How to Give Good Head Part 2 video where I talk about the different parts of a woman and their different G-spots. So I definitely think that you should check that out. If my girl is a touch me not, how do I please her? This is a question I get all the time and I- You know what? That's a really good question that I don't know. I've never been with a touch me not. Never. So answer that question for me. 
completely understand because there's some people that are just not comfortable with being touched. It's maybe something that they've gone through, they're just not comfortable with themselves or they have some insecurity or they just wanna get comfortable with you for a while before they open up. There's other ways that they can be pleased, whether it's just like some action. Yeah, or it just doesn't sexually arouse them. Not everyone is sexual like that you know, over the boxers or a vibrator or the strapping and the feeling of strapping. So talk to your partner or give them time to kind of open up and want to explore that side. How do you deal with fingering causing infection? Anything that you do down there can cause an infection. Mm -hmm. Someone can give you oral and something's in their mouth and that can cause an infection. You can use a toy and it can be clean and it still can cause an infection. Do the best you can in making sure that your hands are clean, your fingernails are clean, your fingernails are short, that you're using the proper cleaning solution for any toys that you use, but also that you're storing it properly too to not build up bacteria. Mm -hmm. Our pH balances are pretty sensitive and can be thrown off. So it's not just fingering y'all. So make sure that you're being as safe as possible. Is there always- Also, you can get STDs from oral sex. A lot of people don't know that you can get STDs in lesbian sexual relations. Yes, you can. Top and bottom. There have been some times where I've been in relationships where that was clear, but then I've been in some situationships or relationships where that is unclear. You know, like one night I might be a top and the next night my girl is aggressive and got us in there and <laughs> she's the aggressor for the night. So she's considered a top, right? But like I said before, it all throw depends. those stereotypes out the window all because depends. every human is different right. and our sexual experiences are very different. My girl comes quickly and then she's done. She like all the way puts her clothes on, but I want to come too. Damn. How can I talk to her about it? Talk what to happens her. if I come across a girl that doesn't give head? All right, so let me answer both of those because that's not okay. It's just yeah, not it's okay not. That's not cool. Lover. Like you have to talk to your lover and say, hey, I feel like I'm pleasing you and I'm not being pleased. So if you have it in you to bring up those conversations because you also need to get to the point where you realize that your sexual pleasure is important. And when you do that, it kind of helps you get the confidence to bring up that conversation. Either you got to talk to her about it and just be like, hey, boo, last night it would have been great if I was pleased too. I kind of feeling a little sexually frustrated. I would love to make sure that when we're done with our sexual experience that I'm also pleased to. Or the other thing is you got- Like as for me, all I need is one orgasm and I am done for the night, okay? And because I know that about myself, I always try my best to please my partner. I always wanna get them first before it happens to me, which is not a problem because it does take me a long time to reach that. Point. But y'all, don't be selfish in the bedroom. Don't do that. Strategize correctly, right? So make sure she, you get yours before she gets hers. Obviously, when that happens, she's done. Now, how to deal with a girl that right. doesn't give head? Like I said, don't be a selfish lover, yo. If you want head, you gotta give it. If you <laughs> wanna be pleased, you gotta please your partner. And that's how I feel, period. But I think it's really having that conversation and trying to understand why that person doesn't prefer that. And if there's another alternative that you you like that they might like to make you feel pleased but if you're not being satisfied you gotta just move on from that person because that's crazy how yeah, to tell my crazy. wife that i want kinky your sex this is your wife have that conversation right that's your wife you guys communication is key not just for a great relationship but also when it comes to sex you need to communicate it should never feel weird when you're talking about things like this if it's uncomfortable for you, then something is wrong there. Gotta figure it out. Acting like this is easy, but it's not. I am a very shy person sometimes, and it's hard for me to bring those subjects up. Because of that, I find a way to give an icebreaker that leads us into that conversation. Like I'll bring up a situation or like a scene from a movie or whatever, and it'll get us talking about something. And I'll be like, actually, no, I like that. That's something I'd be interested in. Have that conversation, right? Because at the end of the day, your wife or your partner should be like, yo, well, I want to try it then if it's something you're interested in. And one of the other ways that I feel like this subject got brought up easily is when we start talking about the subject of what kind of porn we like to watch. I don't know why, but this brings it out of you. You can actually go to watching it with that person and maybe they'll have questions for you. I remember when I needed to tell someone that like, hey, I actually like having head this way. Like this will make me really get there. I was super shy and it took me a really long time, but then I had to come into myself and be like, yo, this matters to me. And I had to just do it. 
Squirting. Is squirting possible? Absolutely. And it's a beautiful experience. Listen, especially <laughs> when they squirt because you took them to that next level. No. Is a lesbian bed death a real thing? I haven't heard this in a very long time, so I had to go actually look this up again. But for those that don't know, for lesbians that are in a couple that stop having sex, there's stats that say that lesbian couples have the least amount of sex versus all kinds of other couples. Really? And that over time, we stop having sex more and more versus all the other couples. That's not all women. For me, I feel Never like heard that over time that I get more and more comfortable with a person, I open up more and I become more sexual and I explore more. And so I guess this is my way of keeping the relationship alive and fun over the years. Try to be adventurous. Try to bring in something that spices up your sex life. Especially, think, especially the longer you are with somebody. You don't, don't want it the same routine over and over. Cause that makes it boring. Interested in being intrigued by your partner will help your relationship last for a long time. Why do some lesbians rush and not know how to please? How do I help my girlfriend get an orgasm? Like I said, there's some people that think that they know what they're doing, but they're honestly not really that experienced, but they want you to feel like they're that experienced. And so they might rush through the process or something, but really just slow them down. Remember, our body is I'm sorry, y'all. Yeah. Temple. So if you're not feeling good about what's happening, speak up and say something. So if they're rushing, just be like, nah, boo, I don't like that. That's not good. Because some youngins or unexperienced <laughs> people will look at lesbian porn and think that's how to do it. But lesbian porn is not made for lesbians. It's for straight men and women. All this sh Nah, girl. Porn in general is a facade for in all sexual relationships. It's like things don't happen as fast as they show you. <laughs> That's in all relationships. It's not made for us. But listen, just talk to that person and get them to know that that's not how they please you and hopefully they will learn. Now with your girlfriend that hasn't gotten an orgasm yet, I really think that it's just about taking time. I find that a lot of people are really scared of people going down on them or don't have orgasms because they're stuck in their head. They're not able facts. to kind of let go. And facts. It's almost like a control thing because they're kind of scared of what could happen. Get them to be comfortable and let go. And so within that, it might be some oral, it might be some penetration or a combo of both. You can never go wrong with a combo of both. Okay. <laughs> okay, you guys, that's all the questions that I can answer this time. But if there's other questions, put them in the comments below and I'll do another video in the future. And also for my YouTube people, don't forget that I post regularly on my Instagram and my Facebook page. Those links are down below. So make sure you guys follow me. That's how you know she old and when she still be posting on Facebook. I do too, girl. And check those videos out. All right, y'all. I love you so much. Stay amazing, stay proud, and stay woke. Peace. Did you know? Hi, Amber's closet. I liked the video. I think she gave you a lot of good information, especially for you newbies. You know, y'all young, still trying to figure it out. I think she did really good with that video. All right, you guys, tell me what you thought about this video. Make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. And please hit that bell so you can get notified every time I upload. See you in the next video. Peace.